Hey guys, Jason here with the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you episode 12 of Practical Drupal Development. In this episode, we are going to dive in and start investigating Views Pager System. So now, the one thing that has changed between this episode and the last is that I have populated the news section here with a whole bunch of articles. I have 10 on here now. Um, there's nothing really to them other than different titles, different images, and some test content here. But now what's happening by default is that Drupal is just kind of spitting out all of our articles, and we've set it up to do that whether we've realized it or not. Um, so let's take a look at the different options that we have for displaying this content here. If we click the little gear icon and go to Edit View, over here in the pager section, if we click this display all items, you'll see that we have several options right now. We can display a specified number of items, which will only display the amount of items that we tell Drupal to display. There will be no pager system in order to get to the rest of the articles. It's only going to spit out the number that we say. And that's it. People will not be able to see articles beyond that point. And that's not really what we want for this. Um, as you can see, we're displaying all of the items right now, which you saw what it's doing. If we had 150 articles, it would spit out all 150 right there on that page. And that can really increase load time for that specific page and that's not really what we want if it was a page that maybe only ever was going to have four items on it displaying all the items would be okay but like I said if we end up with a hundred to hundred and fifty articles which can easily happen if you're keeping up with your blog this page is going to significantly increase in load time and that's just not something we want Below that, you can see that we have these paged full and mini pagers here. And these are just two different kind of pagers that Drupal has, and we're going to take a look at both of them. So let's click on the paged output full pager and click apply. Now you can see that we have some options to specify here. We want to specify the number of items per page. So for us, for right now, let's just say five. Um, this offset we will not worry about right now, but all that it does is it will start um, with the article that you offset to. So for example, right now we are offsetting to zero, so it's starting with the latest post article. But if we set that to one, it would ignore the first one and then start with the second set it to two, it'll ignore the first two. So uh, we will be using this in the future because I want to show you something really cool that we can do with this. Um, but for right now, we are just not going to worry about it. Um, the number of pages, we can limit this down a little bit here. And the number of available links, um, this is the numbers at the bottom of the page. So page one, page two, page three. Um, if you only want it to show maybe the first five pages and then get your dot, 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 you can specify that there. We're not going to actually leave this on, so we're not going to do a whole lot of customizing to it. Um, you can specify the words uh, for the first, the last, and the next, and the previous. This just adds a little bit. Um, you could say next page, previous page. You can just customize this a little bit here. Um, we're not really going to worry about too much of this stuff right now, so let's just click apply and see what that does in our view preview down here. Now, what we should be getting is five articles. And then you'll see this pager system here. And now the full pager system gives you previous, next, first, last, one, two, three. Um, it's just a nice, full, large um, pager system. And uh, that's really all it does. And if we save this here, we can see what that actually did to our page. So once Drupal refreshes here and we'll scroll down and you can see our pager system. And when we click next, 
we just get to the next five articles. If we click first, we'll go back to the first page. If we had more than two pages, first and last would immediately jump us to the first and last pages of this pager system. So let's pop back into views here and switch over to the mini pager and see what the difference is there. So we're going to select mini pager, apply, and you'll see that we kind of have the exact same config here, except we do not have the first and last options available to us. And really, that's the only difference between this configuration. So if we click apply and we save this, and let's just see what that did to our pager. So as you can see, we no longer have the one, two, three, four buttons. We don't have the last and we don't have the first buttons. We just get, kind of get this page one of two and then a next button and then it'll say page two of two and a previous button. So it's just a more condensed pager system and that's really all it does as well. But what we wanna do is something a little more advanced and a little more interesting. Um, if somebody's on a very slow internet connection, it can be a problem to just have to keep clicking the next, waiting for the page to reload. Clicking next, waiting for the page to reload. And it just becomes a, a long, tedious process, especially if you're clicking in to read the article. You've read the article, now you have to go back and you scroll down and you click next. There's a lot of clicking and there's a lot of waiting for pages to load because what's happening is it's not just loading this article section, it's loading our header, our navigation, this uh, menu up here, it's loading the footer and the, this block here, and we don't really want it to have to load the whole page. Why don't we just set it up so that as the user is scrolling down, it just loads the internal section here and brings up the next four or five articles. That way they're not clicking anywhere, they're not waiting for a full page reload, they're just waiting on Drupal to load the next set of articles. We're gonna do that through a new module called Views Infinite Scroll. Again, the link to this page will be in the description of this video. Um, now, there's two things that you actually need to get off of this page, one being the module itself, so go ahead and download that and extract it into Sites All Modules. And then the other thing that you need is this jQuery Auto Pager plugin. When you click this link, it will automatically download for you. Now. There is one thing that is different about this module than most, and it actually breaks Drupal's convention for uh, third-party plugins. This is not something that Drupal actually suggests that you do when you build your modules. However, this is what they've done. Um, so go ahead and download this, and then you need to head over to Sites All Modules, so Sites All and then into the modules folder. And then you need to actually go into the views infinite scroll module and into its JS folder. And that is where we need to drop this auto pager into. Now, like I said, this breaks convention because conventionally, um, most modules will find their third-party plugin here in the libraries folder, but this one is actually having you place it into the module itself into its JS folder. So that is not something that we will be typically doing, but it is something that we had to do for this module. So go ahead and close that down, click modules, Scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you should see Views Infinite Scroll here, and we are going to turn that on and save configuration. This module is extremely easy to configure and get working once you have it installed properly. Um, it's really just flipping a switch, and Drupal takes care of the rest, and it's a really nice aesthetical module. Um, and like I said, it really does increase load time. So as of right now, we still are using our mini pager system here. So let's head back into our view. Let's click on the mini here. And we are going to switch this over to infinite scroll. 
And now we have some new items here. We have the items per page, which is the same as the other, and we are going to leave it at five here. And the number of pager links visible, we are just going to match that to the top there. Um, and really, that's all we have to do. If we apply this, you will see that this isn't really doing much of anything right now, so we will save that. And now you can see that as we scroll down, and it happens kind of quick, so I'm going to scroll back up and refresh here. We are going to get the first five articles in our list, and then once we hit the bottom, you're going to see this little loading icon, much like Pinterest, and it's going to then auto-load the next five articles and spit them out to us. So once we hit the bottom here, you can see it loading, and there's our next five articles. If we had five more, it would load and then spit out the next five. If we only had two more, it would load and it would spit out the next two. And you can configure this so that instead of having maybe five visible, and we're gonna do an extreme case here, just so that we can see, if we click the second infinite scroll here, we're going to do items per page, and I always like to match these up. It really isn't a big deal, but it's just something that I always like to do. Um, so if we save that, and you can play around with those configurations all you would like. Um, and this is just to show you a more extreme example so that this happens a lot more often. Now, it has already... No, it hasn't. There we go. So there, now there's two more. Now there's two more. Two more. So you can see how this just dynamically loads, and it is faster than waiting on this page to refresh. So here's the page refreshing. So that would be simulating clicking a pager link one more time here. And then here is simulating just the infinite scroll. Now, things are a lot faster because we are on a local testing environment. Um, I'm going to head back in here and change this back to five. So it's a little harder to see the difference between the load times because we are on a local server. And because of that, we don't have to wait on our internet provider in order to load the page, but it is faster. Um, so this is the views infinite scroll module. This is what we wanted for our article section. And now we have it in the next episode. We are going to start diving into the taxonomy system because we are going to categorize these different articles. Um, and we're going to, I've kind of set mine up with a couple of just different series images. So what I'm going to do is set up a taxonomy that will classify each one of these articles as either a Drupal article or a music theory article. Now, I know that your articles will be different. They won't be Drupal series and music theory series. However, you can come up with some sort of classification system for your articles. And if you don't really want to do that, you don't have to. But the information is really important to understand because Drupal's taxonomy system is quite powerful and it lets you do a lot of really cool things. We've already seen a little bit of that with the tag system, but we're really going to dive into it in depth and study it. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a like, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to this channel, and I will see you in the next episode of One Stop How To Guys Practical Drupal Development.